In the beginning, the Earth was devoid of living things. Then, about three and a half billion years ago, something completely new appeared, life. For two and a half billion years, single-celled organisms dominated the Earth. They were minuscule creatures, completely enclosed in a fragile membrane. These were living, pulsing beings, but they were not animals. Somehow, cells developed a language that allowed them to work together. When they did, it was a turning point for life on Earth. The very first animal had begun to take shape. Scientists looked at an organism that seems closest to making this leap. Coanoflagellates, while single-celled, resemble the specialized cells that line the channels of sponges, which are considered by many to be the most primitive living animal. A sponge is covered with small pores called ostea, which lead to a system of internal canals and eventually out to one or more larger holes called oscula. Within the canals of the sponge, chambers are lined with specialized cells called coanocytes or collar cells. The collar cells have a sticky funnel-shaped collar and a hair-like whip called a flagellum. The collar cells serve two purposes. First, they beat their flagella back and forth like fans to move water through the sponge. The water brings in nutrients and oxygen while it carries out waste and carbon dioxide. Second, the sticky collars of the collar cells pick up tiny bits of planktonic food brought in with the water. It takes a few seconds for the dye to work its way through the sponge. Wait for it. But then it pours out like smoke from a chimney. That's pretty good pumping from those tiny little collar cells. Hundreds of millions of years ago, before animals swam the ocean's waters or scurried along the seafloor, only one group of animals existed. They were sponges. Then creatures far more complex sprang into being and changed the world forever. These were the first Cnidarians. They may not look like pioneers, but Cnidarians marked a turning point for animal behavior. These creatures were the first to wield sensitive tentacles that could actually reach out and perceive the world. More than 500 million years ago, Cnidarians invented other features we take for granted today. Here was an animal with a mouth. And connected to that mouth, a stomach to digest food. It was a brilliant innovation that would spread throughout the animal kingdom. But Cnidarians brought even greater inventions. These deceptively simple creatures invented movement. The very first animal movements may have looked much like these subtle stirrings. With two sets of muscles, Cnidarians can bend in any direction. To control their muscles, they rely on another Cnidarian invention, special cells, cells called nerves. Through a set of these nerves, electrical impulses trigger one set of muscles to contract, pushing the animal higher. By contracting the other set of muscles, the animal can flex itself into the perfect pose for snagging food. It looks so simple, but all creatures that crawl, soar, or swim today rely on muscle and nerve 
their ancient inheritance from Cnidarians. Appearances can be deceiving. Creatures that look slow and simple actually started the nimble dance of life. The Gobi is a swift swimmer, with eyes and senses attuned to any sign of danger and a brain able to process complex signals. It seems better equipped for survival. For the Gobi, one unguarded moment could be fatal. Dragging the fish into its mouth, the anemone devours it with tools invented by its ancient ancestors. The goby will be slowly digested alive. These tiny coral polyps are also cnidarians, and like their cousins, they are predators, dining on plankton. Anchored to a rock on the ocean floor, a solitary cnidarian called Stompfia. It looks vulnerable, but looks can be deceiving. Stompfia remains unaware of the approaching danger. But when Dermasterius comes close enough to touch it, Stompfia springs into action. Stunning defensive maneuver, Stompfia frees itself from the rock and swims away. This is one of just a few anemones that can actually swim. For millions of years, some cnidarians evolved in a dramatically new direction. The edges of their mouth extended, and they developed arm-like feeding structures. Their tentacles became thin strands. Their cylindrical stalk transformed to a gelatinous bell and a familiar, ghost-like animal took shape. With the evolution of jellyfish, cnidarians may well have been the first animals to swim the world's oceans. With a body plan that would endure the ages, they entered watery realms across the planet. Today, these ocean drifters are prolific, and they come in a stunning variety of shapes and sizes. Millions of years ago, unlikely pioneers sparked a revolution. Cnidarians set animal life in motion. So much of what we take for granted today began with cnidarians. Simple creatures that forever set into motion the magnificent shape of life.
This is the acorn worm. They have no eyes, no brain, no sense organs, and subsist mostly on a diet of, well, dirt. They're also the link between vertebrates and invertebrates. This diminutive creature, Amphioxus, tells us volumes about our own evolution. Without eyes, ears, or jaws, this is a very simple organism. Yet it has some surprising things in common with us. Amphioxus have some body equipment oddly like our own. Amphioxus has a nerve cord, which relays commands from the brain. It has gill slits, just as human embryos do. It has segmented muscles that allow it to move, but the real innovation was the notochord, a stiffening rod reinforcing its shape. This was the precursor of a backbone. We carry vestiges of a notochord, the discs in our spine. Primitive fish have bony arches that hold up their gills. The fossil record suggests that over time, natural selection favored fish whose arches were set forward until they were able to grasp the food trying to wriggle away. The bottom arch swiveled. The top arch provided stability. It was a structural change that enabled survival. and tail of the coelacanth are in contrast to the fine rays of the more common ray-finned fishes, which make up the majority of fish species. As it drifts with the currents, it uses them to stabilize itself and maneuver in virtually any direction. It evolved from fish that made their way into the fresh water and could breathe air when they had to for survival. But where the earlier fish had fins, it developed limbs. It was a strange creature, about a meter or three feet long. The animal was able to wriggle its way forward through the water, almost as if it was swimming. But it would have been very slow without fins. So why hands with fingers?
To move through such a tangled pile of branches, hands with fingers would be very useful. Possibly this was the reason our ancestor developed limbs. The earliest known animal to walk on land is called pedipes and came ashore perhaps 348 million years ago. first tentative steps across land were to change the earth forever. Bashirs too can make flappy forays over land, but they walk in a very different way. In fact, scientists think they walk like the ancestors of all tetrapods might have walked. Fisherpods, if you will. Studying how they react to a terrestrial environment could help us understand how the very first fishy footsteps were taken on land. fish out of water, maybe, but they thrive here in Japan. So what's made this upheaval worthwhile? The answer lies in the mud. As the tide retreats, it exposes mud flats. Whoa, that is huge. 